My universal design for learning presentation is on designing elementary mathematics lessons, specifically in addition. The curriculum I am discussing is one that I use in my first grade classroom, Bridges Mathematics from the Math Learning Center. The Bridges program is a K-5 curriculum made up of three parts, problems and investigations, which are your main lessons, workplaces, and number corner. It utilizes quality children's literature to support learning along with games, manipulatives, and more. This quote from Roland, Whitting, and Smith comes from an article in the journal Advances in Special Education Technology. Uh, this is from an article titled, What Do You Need to Create and Maintain Web Accessibility? The general idea here is that more and more students are relying on technology for education. Here, um, part of the quote says 71% of teens said that they used it primarily um, for their assignment. It needs to be accessible to all because technology is in all education parts, even elementary school. So we have universal design for learning, which is made up of three main components, engagement, representation, and expression. The engagement piece helps learners to see the why of learning. It has to do with how we motivate the learner to get into the lesson. In my own classroom, I try to connect to my students' background. They're almost all Native American. When I'm introducing a lesson, I want to make it relevant to their life if I can. A lot of things can affect a student's motivation for a project or lesson, so providing multiple means of engagement will help to get all learners on board with the lesson. The representation piece helps learners by presenting information in multiple ways in a format that is adjustable. That includes the ability to adjust for sensory disabilities or anyone else who requires a different way of accessing the content providing videos with subtitles, auditory options for readings, or the ability to adjust the speed of the learning can assure that all students have access to the material. The expression piece helps learners express their knowledge in a way that makes sense to them, a way that is comfortable for them. A big part of expression is the ability of individuals with significant disabilities to be able to express themselves in what they have learned. That includes people with movement impairments, organizational disabilities, language barriers, etc. A learner can express his or her knowledge in many ways, not just written, and should have the opportunity to do so however they can. The Bridges curriculum consists of three parts. The problems and investigations where the teacher poses a problem to the class. The teacher then asks the students to think independently first about the problem. Then there's a period of work where the students work in groups or independently depending upon the lesson. The students then get the opportunity to pair up and share their findings with a partner. Finally, the students reconvene as a class and discuss and compare their findings. The workplaces are stations to practice the skills learned during those lessons. They're in the form of games. Some of them are independent. Some are two-player games. Some are board-style games for four players. The stations stay in the rotation for a few weeks as the lessons are learned to help reinforce the skills. The students have a few different choices of games to practice the skills being learned. The number corner is a separate piece where quick daily skill activities are taught and reviewed, such as a calendar with patterns, growing collections, number lines, and a daily days in school breakdown. The display creates a math rich environment with many visual cues. When I'm teaching addition, the engagement piece with every Bridges lesson, we participate in pair share, which allows students to discuss the topic with their peers, which can help students get engaged. That's a great time for cultural influence to be noted and even used if it helps the students to better understand the why of the topic. Bridges offers online versions of its texts and all of its manipulatives, even down to the little cubes. There's an iPad app where they can be moved around on the screen. Some students really want the technology piece. There's a physical version of each item we use and a digital version for them too. Bridges also offers quality literature that goes along with some of the lessons to help get students engaged. A really good read aloud at the beginning of a lesson can engage some of those learners who need a story. There are stories about doubles, dominoes, symmetry, etc. Students set goals for themselves and setting a goal can really help some students to get engaged. They want to see the end goal before they can start working towards it. It helps to know the target, so posting long-term learning goals and short-term lesson targets help keep students on track. 
Bridges offers a lot of progress monitoring so teachers can be assessing students and offering enrichment or remediation as needed. So when teaching an addition lesson to my students, I have many ways of presenting the information. I love to start with a good read aloud that is related to the lesson if I have it. When we are learning three plus three, you of course have your standard way of writing the problem. Then you can also represent that with a 10 frame where you put three dots in the top row and three in the bottom row, or using three red cubes and three blue ones. When we're learning about using the Reckon racks, which are the red and white bead racks, we use a physical version, but we also use the app for the iPad version of the same tool. When teaching addition in Bridges, the representation piece, Bridges is highly accessible. I posted here the link to the Ed Report on Bridges. All of the Bridges resources are offered in both physical and digital format. That includes text, worksheets, manipulatives, etc. All videos can have captions turned on. All digital media can be used by screen readers and other assistive devices. Bridges utilizes display materials like vocabulary cards, which I find very helpful with my English language learners, but can help every student to internalize the information. Scaffolding is an important part of the representation piece because each learner needs to be met where they are. They need just enough support to grasp the concept, then the support needs to disappear as soon as it's no longer needed. The workplaces that we use when I teach addition are a great example of gradual release of responsibility. The students become very independent on those games eventually, and some end up teaching other students how to play them. The expression piece when I'm teaching addition with bridges. When I'm assessing my students' knowledge of addition, I use both paper assessments and more authentic assessments. Bridges provides many different data points from different types of assessment of the same skill. Reflecting on learning is done during the think, pair, share phase at the end of the lessons when we converse as a class about what we have learned. Hearing a peer explain how they figured out a skill or develop a strategy could help a student that is struggling. Goal tracking is related to that. Students can be tracking a goal the whole unit, setting smaller goals along the way. The Bridges program teaches many different strategies for addition and encourages student-created strategies to be allowed to be used. For example, to add 10 plus six, a student could use popsicle sticks. A bundle is a group of 10 and six single popsicle sticks makes 16. The rack and rack, the red and white bead rack, could be used to show 10 beads on top and six on the bottom. A 10 frame, could be used to show one full 10 frame, which would have 10 dots in it, and then another 10 frame next to it with six dots. A student would count those up to get 16. A student could use unifix cubes to show me 10 cubes plus six cubes. Then of course, the student could show their knowledge with paper and pencil. A lot of these options give the ability to use 10 as your base. And that's a good place for a lot of students to start. Even then, the student doesn't necessarily have to show me in numbers or words, they could use pictures. The workplace games, like the one shown here up in the upper right corner with the spinner in the middle, encourages skill development by making it a fun game. Here, the students would spin the spinner, each taking turns. The goal is to get to 10. They are learning how to make 10 in different ways, 0 plus 10, 1 plus 9, 2 plus 8, etc. There are many games like this in the rotation at any one time. The difficulty varies and all games have a challenge version for the advanced students. Every one of the games is designed to reinforce the skill being taught like addition with N10. So when it comes time to show me what they know, the students are not limited to just 10 plus six equals written on paper. They have many different ways they could show me they know how to add. In summary, the Bridges program is highly accessible. It absolutely conforms with the UDL standards. The question is, am I using it to its full ability? The answer is no. After researching into the program for this assignment, I see that there's a lot more than I can be doing. So here's what I'm already doing. I definitely use the physical and digital manipulatives. If we are using the number rack, we also have the iPad number rack out at some point. I always offer the iPad as an alternative because Bridges has the same manipulatives like cubes and number racks in iPad form. Some kids just like that better. However, I was not always making use of things like subtitles when students were using the iPads independently. 
I post the vocabulary cards in the number corner that the number corner provides. I often work with English language learner students in my classroom, and I find that vocabulary posted around the room when referred to often can help the students learn the vocabulary. If there's a picture or word card that is involved in the lesson, I make sure to use it, post it, and refer to it. I follow the Bridges assessment schedule and instructions, so I know that I'm assessing students in multiple authentic ways. As I mentioned before, there are many different ways a student could show me their math knowledge besides paper and pencil. They also get the opportunity to explain their thinking, which helps the teacher uncover misunderstandings and also helps to clarify their thinking. Finally, I utilize pair share frequently and not just in math. I find that allowing students to talk to each other can be very valuable. They are more comfortable speaking to peers and I get to hear exactly what they think. It helps me uncover those misunderstandings and it allows students to get their ideas out there in a comfortable environment. Speaking about something you have learned can help to solidify it. Plus, a student who may not have understood it from me may understand it after listening to a different student. Here's what I can fix. I was unaware that Bridges offered so many accessibility features. Next year, I will be utilizing them more. I'm also going to change the way that I make handouts and presentations of my own. I want to make sure that they have the appropriate font and setup to be recognized by speech readers and other assistive devices. I want to use their suggested literature to hook the children into the lesson and provide the necessary background they may not have had yet for the lesson. Like the book that teaches them about dominoes before the domino lesson, some students didn't know what a domino was. Although I post the vocabulary cards, I think that I could post a few more pictures from outside resources to help show what the vocabulary word means. For example, when we're studying 3D shapes, I will post pictures of the real-world example. A sphere is a basketball, a cylinder is a Coke can, etc. My students tend to have a limited vocabulary when they start school, so any way we can reinforce it helps. I would also like to start using Bridges goal tracking features. I do track goals with students, but I think that I could do a better job. I have not been all that consistent with goals in the past. I will set concrete goals for my students and help them track them. The goals will be tailored to a student's needs and take into account any IEPs. Finally, I would like to fully employ Bridges' robust system of workplaces. There's a lot to the program, so I have not been able to fully keep up with the rotating stations. This year, I plan to get the workstations out on schedule. They're meant to provide multiple ways to practice the skills I'm teaching the class, so they need to be correctly rotated. This will give all students a chance to reinforce the skills they are learning. And that's how I'm going to change my teaching of Bridges to fit the UDL standards. Thanks for watching.